how is this for a dystopic future? You could soon be eating lab-grown fruit as a side to your lab-grown meat, and said fruit could be sprayed with Bill Gates' produce coating chemical on it. So there are two things here that we're going to tell you about. One, that lab-grown fruit is a thing. Doesn't roll off the tug. Lab-grown fruit. Doesn't it's, grow off the tug. Doesn't the tug, roll the off the tongue. You try lab, saying it. Bill Gates. Lab grown fruit. Lab grown fruit. Uh, hot on the heels of lab grown meat. Yeah. I was going to say, Clayton still has trouble with emergency use authorization. So. Yes. Oh, I can't say that. And emergency you have trouble use. with nuclear. Nu yeah, nu we all have our... Th Let us know in the chat room. Hey, none of us are perfect. <laughs> Let us know in the chat room, is there a phrase that you screw up on a regular basis? Because, yes, emergency use authorization, unless I take it very, very slowly, uh -huh. I, can't, I can't say it. That's all right. Well, I'm going to yeah, struggle through this one about lab-grown fruit. <laughs> yeah. Bill it Gates shouldn't is, be a thing. Bill That's Gates not my lab fault. lab-grown fruit. Okay. Uh, well, Bill Gates, you know, these two things could go hand in hand. We want to let you know that he has a company called Appeal that they say can make produce last for longer. It's a product that you spray on your produce and it acts like a plastic coating, uh, but then you eat it. You don't scrub it off. They say it's totally safe. Of course they do. Here is CNBC giving them this free commercial. Uh, I'm going to just let it play for a little bit. You'll get the idea and then I'm, I'm going to stop it. But Watch for a second, see what you think. How long will that avocado? Okay, so he then goes on to say, yeah, like an avocado can last weeks. Uh, avocados don't Anyway, get this is a CNBC, like basically like a commercial for Bill Gates. They love having Bill Gates on their on their air on a regular basis. Anytime they get a chance to have him on and interview yeah. him. Like, I appreciate you stopping me on the tangent about avocados. Yeah. Too, <laughs> you know that where I was going. Um, okay, so yes, food spoilage is bad, and it's estimated that 30% of the world's food gets thrown away, but... Is the solution to pr spray a chemical on your fruit? Uh, and what is it that we're agreeing to spray on our produce? It's basically seed oils. Look, this is from the website of Appeal. They're saying that it's plant-based material. Now, I guess because we all go crazy for the word plant-based these days, they think that that's kind of okay. They say it's purified mono and diglycerides derived from sustainably sourced non-GMO plant oils. So basically it's vegetable. It's like a Crisco or, um, you know, sunflower oil or safola oil or, or whatever it is. Um, if you look at how it's produced, pr processed, they're saying, well, because it's so highly processed, you know, we remove allergens, we remove other impurities, we remove trans fats. So there's no trans fats. Okay. But I I think nutritionists universally agree that seed oils are a terrible thing that we should not be eating. That's one of the reasons that even nutritionists say don't eat those beyond meat or impossible burger or what have you, because they are laden with seed oil. Seed oils is the new trans fat, the thing that nobody wants to eat. So will you take a healthy, healthy piece of produce and spray it with seed oils? Um, I don't want to do that. I'd rather just buy my food in, in a more timely manner. Um, but yes, I agree that food spoilage is a problem. I don't agree that this is a viable solution. Uh, plus, uh, they say that, you know, they are going to grow their own seed oils. So this is going to lead to deforestation. Look at what they say here. How do you source these material? Well, we farm it. So they're going to clear out farmland and grow seed oils. In fact, seed oils is responsible for more deforestation than uh, most agri um, livestock farming. We've shown you those data before. And so you're going to deforest more, grow more things in order to put on the things you've already grown that seems pretty wasteful, don't you think? Yeah, and then Bill Gates wants to cut down all of these trees like he announced, you know, this new plan. So we're going to deforest everything so we can plant more stuff. So we can plant things for more seed oils so that you can eat uh, imitation meat burgers 
and spray this stuff on your um, otherwise unspoiled. We're going to bastardize your I mean, how your do those fruit, two things basically? go together? Like all these environmentalists who are like, hey, go out and plant a tree. You know, go plant a tree, go plant a tree this weekend. You know, go out with a team of people. And this whole hillside has been ravaged by a wildfire. Go plant a tree. And then Bill Gates wants to come and tear them all down so he can plant stuff to make seed oils with. So you'll have a, a double down diet of seed oils because he doesn't want you to eat meat. So you're eating a patty that's stuffed with seed oils. The bun usually has seed oils. There's seed oils in your condiments. And then your produce side, whether if it's salad or tomatoes or what have you, are going to also be sprayed with a coating of seed oils to make them last longer. Uh, I want nothing to do with this. You decide how you feel about it. This is not my nutritional philosophy in life. But if CNBC is giving a commercial without any tough questions, uh, why should we take, we definitely should take this as a sign that globalists like it. Uh, and they want this for our food source. Um, and soon we'll be able to have a side dish or a fruit salad of lab grown fruit or fruit adjacent is what I want to call it. Because they're saying they're not actually going to duplicate fruit. They're going to make things that they've grown are, that are fruit like. Um, we already have that. We have fruit roll ups. Have you ever had a fruit roll up? That's fruit adjacent. Yeah. We I saw, I, yeah, the other day we were at, yeah, at a market and there was like some food that was shaped like a fruit. Like, have you guys ever had, um, what, are the, what is the candy that has the bananas in it? Um, runts. Did you guys ever eat runts as a runts. kid? I That's used to go not to, fruit adjacent. I used to, my, my friend Ben and I used to go to the arcade. We'd go to the candy store. We'd buy runts. And I used to love the banana ones. Um, You're so weird. Nobody eats the banana runts. I always thought, I love no, those. They, they do. I did. I the, thought they were bananas. There, there's actually I've seen I've seen the little quarter op machines, the little the little candy dispenser machines that are just filled with banana runs, and those are the what? absolute best machines on. Yeah, where is that machine? You're blowing my mind. I want that machine. No. I would you need one in the sort those yeah. out no. and get so rid of them. This is kind of like the fake fruit. In, it seems like the same thing, like a fake fruit, like that. We're gonna start. Well, you know, I'm gonna, gonna get, say like, square apples and. Round bananas. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to say I would rather eat runts and fruit roll-ups than this lab-grown fruit. And we're going to get to that in a second. Because scientists in New Zealand are now working to grow fruit tissue from yeah. plant cells that they hope will be just as tasty as fruit from a tree. This is from a company called Plant and Food Research. And they are government-owned and funded. Uh, so basically, this is their like promo video that's on their website here. Um, I'm going to just let you see that they think that like, oh, look at us. We're growing fruit in a Petri dish. This is so awesome. Uh, so basically, the entire country of New Zealand is funding lab grown fruit projects. Um, and in fact, wait, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, wait until we get the gain of function fruit, right? <laughs> gain of function fruit, um, I guess, because they're showing us fish that they're also looking at lab grown fish. We already know that lab grown meat is a pet project of globalists around the world. Um, and in fact, they may not be trying to necessarily recreate an apple, but create a new type of fruit that you might like and eat. Look at this from one of the lab technicians, the lead scientist saying they've already done stem cell research um, or har harvest cell harvesting from blueberries, apples, cherries, feijoas, peaches, nectarines, and grapes. Uh, but much like lab grown meats, the challenge is to create an end product that's nutritious and has a taste, texture, and appearance that consumers are familiar with. He says, in order to grow a piece of food that's desirable to eat, we will need more than just a collection of cells. So we're investigating approaches that are likely to live, deliver a fresh food eating experience. The aim isn't to try to replicate a piece of fruit that's grown in the traditional way, but rather create a new food with equally appearing, appealing properties. So fruit flavored fruit. Or I don't know. I can't come up with some fruit flavored fruit, fruit flavored, but not I mean, fruit for it, for it to have like the, the energy needs that you would need out of fruit. Cause I mean, that's basically like, you know, you convert sun energy into, into sugars. That's basically how the energy system works. Where are they getting that energy to add to this fruit? Are they just like growing fruit, mulching up fruit, regrowing the fruit? And then, like, <laughs> <why>? <laughs> so like, many questions. You know what I hear? I hear, uh, a, a better like fruit flavored mrna that's where my head goes okay yeah, yeah. that'll you know, protect like, you it'll be a delivery yeah it'll be a delivery method for things that they've like well we can't give them it give it to them this way but if we make these hybrids of these fruits we can sneak stuff in there and they'll never know because it'll taste like a banana 
Yeah. Right. Well, that's why you have these organic farmers saying, you know, to make sure that they do not have mRNA in their cattle, et cetera, uh, you know, to make sure that that stuff is kept away from them. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it reminds me of Encino Man, where he goes to the 7-Eleven and he, call, he gets like the fruit candy and he calls it the fruit group. Like, right. oh, this is a meat group is a frozen burrito. <laughs> Fruit group, fruit group is like sour straws. <laughs> like that's what we're doing here. Okay. Um, this same person, the same scientist spoke to the guardian and said here in New Zealand, we're good at growing conventional horticultural co- crops, but looking at the future, there's a lot of change coming in the world with population growth, increasing urbanization and climate change. So that piqued my interest because climate change, you say you want to do this because it would be better for the environment or easier. Okay, well, they might want to look into this study that we talked about just a few months ago, showing that lab grown meat has a higher carbon footprint than traditional livestock farmed meat. Researchers at UC Davis found that what is called ACBM or animal based No, animal cell-based meat, ACBM. I'm just going to call it lab-grown meat. None of it rolls off the tongue. Uh, Anyway, it's much worse for the environment than traditional meat because this is how it's made. You think that this looks like a better plan than having a cow on the field? Um, Okay. Uh, Here's what they concluded about cell-based meat or lab-grown meat. The results indicate that the environmental impact of near-term ACBM production is likely to be orders of magnitude higher than median beef production if a highly refined growth medium is utilized for lab-grown production. So yikes, the UC Davis researchers found that lab meat could increase global warming between four and 25 times more than retail beef. So when you look at that chart, can we put that chart back on and we think like, well, you know, there'd be a similar like beaker type test tube way of making lab grown fruit as the way that we're making lab grown meat. It's got to go through all of this. Uh, Of course, this is not going to be better for the planet than a tree, an apple tree or a cherry tree, right? Clearly this like who, who's thinking this is better. Um, and you know, it's interesting because we all buy into this BS because we know that meat is so demonized. We're told that it's not good for you. We're told that it's bad for the planet. All, All yada, yada, yada. Right. Uh, we haven't really seen demonization of fruit yet as in we should not be eating that. And so, This lab grown alternative is here for you and Bill Gates is going to spray it with his appeal Um, yet. So be on the lookout for that. If that narrative pops up that you shouldn't be eating fruit. I mean, a little bit it is like Meghan Markle is an elitist because she eats right. This was the whole thing about her on Oprah because she wants an avocado per day. Um, And so that makes her a bad person because avocados are like the blood diamond of Mexico. Um, So a little bit we see some demonization of fruit, but maybe not to the extent that we're about to see because there is a lab grown alternative they want to push on us. Uh, So eat fruit while you can, because it looks like we're getting fruit adjacent. Yes. Well, as long as they pack it full of glucose, the Americans will love it. So that's right. I suppose that's right. Full of sugar and they'll be happy, happy about it. And that's the thing I was getting at is like, there are so many processes out of like the natural growth of fruit where it's like, you know, you're getting like amino acids being created. Like is lab grown fruit going to do that? Or are they going to have to inject the, like, where are they going to get the things that they, that they have to inject in there? Cause it's, well, it's not, that, a fruit's not just cells with sugar in it. It's there's actual, like, that's what if other things in there. Yeah. Yeah. And if you look at that diagram, there was, there was a little tub for amino acids and a little tub for glucose. Like that was being put in there. You're right. It is there, but that's in the meat. This is the, this is the, oh. this is the meat diagram. There's glucose going in meat. Yeah. But they, well, yeah, but they, they, cause that's what, that's what energy is in the, in the, in the food cycle. It's, it's basically just sugars. And right. so like they're, they're going to have to be getting these nutrients from somewhere because you can't naturally, they're, they're not going to be in a lab creating nutrients. They're going to be in there like like individually building amino acids. So like they're going to be ha- they're going to have to get this stuff from somewhere and they're going to have to get it from fruit. So then it's just like it's just like fruit with more steps. Like right. Exactly. It, been- We're going to take real fruit <laughs> and highly process it into a fake fruit and it'll have 80 yeah. ingredients like the forever or the impossible burgers when you'd be better off actually eating a real burger or Wait. picking an apple from a tree. I, I'd be, yeah. 
I'd be happier with this if they just said, we just wanted to see if we could do it. Then I'd be like, bam, go science. Yeah. Or like when they're like, we're, we're trying to solve the world's problems. Like, you're not. You know you're not. You're creating more problems. <laughs> the impossible <laughs> banana. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine these people come home from work and like, we're almost there, honey. We, we almost got a blueberry, you know, yeah. or ish. Like, and this is going to, this is going to save the world. And they're sure. like, no, honey, they're like, honey, how did you it make that blueberry? Well, you know where we made this blueberry from crushed up other blueberries. <laughs> right. Like, well, honey, glad you were gone all day. Okay. I, I folded the laundry we while got, you were doing something we really it, important. We down to, it only takes three blueberries to make one blueberry. Now we're getting close. <laughs> we're getting close. <laughs> All right, maybe uh, we're missing something. I don't know. You know, we're we're watching this lab-grown production being pushed out in front of us. If you think that we're missing something, let us know. Uh, and if you are a okay with eating lab-grown food, I mean, what's that much? It, I guess it's not that much different from like a sour straw or a fruit roll-up. That's lab. It's grown. not real food That's like though. It's like lab-made e food. That's you're not eating real this food. as like a fun little treat because you're at the arcade with your friends when you're t 12 years old. I'm talking about myself. Right. Um, so no one's thinking that like, oh, this is better. This People is should better. just eat sour. Wake straws. up in the morning and have runts for breakfast, or you know, or Skittles. Yeah. Because it's shaped like a fruit. I ate sour straws almost every day in college. I just loved them. So you know. I used to buy big bags, the big plastic bag of runts. And would pick through and just try to eat the bananas. And I have so many people here in the chat right now that are saying, yes, the banana yes runs banana are the runs. way to yeah. go. You are my people. Oh, my yes. gosh. Well, so have you, have you tried banana like... high chews? No. What is that? Oh, yeah. Try a banana high chew. That's, that's where you want to be. Okay. You, you can order them on Amazon. Order them. Um, but I was just going to say, like, look at all of the <laughs> vegan foods that have tried to mimic like real foods, like vegan cheese, vegan meat, and all this stuff. And it's just like, I'm all like, anytime I've ever taken a bite of any of that stuff, I'm just like, ah, I mean, I can kind of see it's there, but like, I just can't imagine them being able to re recreate the, like, like a strawberry, like yeah. a strawberry right out of the garden is just so juicy. And I, like, how could they think that they could replicate that? Yeah. yeah. This right. is me in the grocery store. I'll pick up like vegan butter and I'm like, okay, what's in it? And I'm like, ah. You guys, you've seen it. What? Yeah. Oh, look look what? at the 50 ingredients on this vegan butter. It's yeah. like all sorts of <laughs> yeah. seed oil and stuff that's going to give you cancer. Uh -huh. And like, it's so awful for you. Yes. Eat real foods. Eat real foods. Real meat. I mean, yeah. And real fruit while you can get it. And uh, yeah, we're well, we are big fans in this family of the carnivore code, eating, eating basically the carnivore diet and uh, eating very healthy meats. Um, and really trying to like limit that. So, yeah. Did you know, I'm going to share a fun fact no one asked me for, um, but that human teeth started to become misaligned when the Chinese invented utensils. And we are literally supposed to put our teeth in, like in e even museums, you can see that prehistoric man that just like, ate their food like that, grab kept a, their, kept their grab teeth a drum in alignment stick of chicken and, just and had it. perfect, my orthodontist was talking about this recently and I've, I've read it in several books before. So my daughter, my youngest is losing her front teeth and I'm like, we have to eat more like food without utensils now as her teeth come in because it will help the alignment. And such so tonight we had ribs <laughs> next week. We're having roast chicken, yeah. like things. I would literally want her to do that as her front teeth are coming in for that reason. And our oldest daughter has like perfectly straight teeth because I always would joke with her. She would never use utensils. I'm like, Ava, what are you doing? And she's like grabbing a chicken bone. She's like, what daddy? And, and she's like, she'll she, eat like rice. She eats her, like, like a barbarian. She eats like yeah. a cave woman, but she has perfect <laughs> teeth. Yeah. It's, and this is documented. Anthrop anthropologists have Look documented it up. this before science. Yeah. I'm throwing out all my utensils. They're gone. Yes. <laughs> do you really have that many anyway? <laughs> it is amazing. No, yeah. Read, many. do the research. So it's, it's pretty crazy about it, but yeah, it's true. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.